Hey fellow nomads, it's George and I am back with the last of my Flashback Fridays. This is the recap of the last of my first dozen and a half videos that I did back when I had under 100 subscribers. I wasn't doing chats with everybody like I do on Mondays and Wednesdays now. In fact, if you haven't seen one of those, join me at 8 p.m. Eastern and we will get together and talk in the chat while we look at new stuff that I'm finding. But this is from the end of 2019. This was the first time I filmed at the Mount Dora Antique Show, the big Renegers extravaganza. And it was right before Christmas. In fact, I think I had Dolly Parton in a Christmas outfit in my original thumbnail. I was still learning how to do a lot of things back then. And I am so happy that now that I can actually communicate directly with you that we get to recap these and I can tell you what I saw and maybe a few things that we missed along the way. So let's take a look at the video and we'll go experience it. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, I was so proud of myself because I just figured out how to do that intro. And here it says part two of what? Well, we had a previous uh, episode from here because Mount Dora is gigantic. You could film and film and film and film. I love blue mirrored Art Deco, so I of course had to take a picture of that table. I used to have a lot of that in my house. I was a big Art Deco collector when I was first in the business, and you could still find more of it. I have moved on to other things because the place I live in now, it uh, wouldn't have been appropriate there. But that's part of the fun of collecting is that you can change as your moods, tastes, and location change. Metal boxes were just starting to really be a big thing, and so we were starting to see dealers bringing scads of those to shows, so I had to show that off. Uh, this is in the back part. Up on the hill behind, which you can't see because we're down too low, is the big flea market, but this is the antique show portion. And we had people bringing a lot of signs. Signs are still very popular, but I think that uh, they've gotten harder to find. So we're gonna see a ton of them in this space, and these, for the most part, are genuine and old. Um, that Pepsi button on the bottom looked a little too good to be true. But these in the background here are definitely old. And I would be very surprised if this dealer has any of these left. Uh, we didn't see this dealer this year because of the issues with traveling and getting around. And this dealer came from a long way, I think from Texas, to sell here. Uh, but boy, did he have a great selection. and. You know, the prices have run way up on these. It's so funny to look at things he had five and $600 on and say, ooh, I wish I'd bought that, but now we do. <laughs> Even the ones with a lot of bullet holes in them seem to be going for a lot. I like the churns here, and I was just starting to use the ticker, um, and I wanted to point out that um, the cast iron mammies and things like that are fakes, uh, but his other stuff in here is real. All these torches are real, and the lanterns are real and all these wood planes are real. You can look at the ends of these wood block planes and you'll often see an embossed stamp where they marked who made them in the end and that can matter to collectors. And then there's branding irons and saddles. The, the prices on the saddles are really good. Anytime I see a decent saddle under $100 I get excited these days. Old copper boilers. I remember the first time I saw one of those, I listened to a mother and a daughter and the mother, uh, the daughter was telling her mom how great they were and how she was going to put kindling or magazines in them. And the mom looked at her and said, those were so much work and so heavy and so awful. I never want to see one again. <laughs> so it's all perspective, depending on when you came into these things. Here's some beautiful stained glass. This dealer was from the United States and so, uh, and so are these pieces. And they're a little different from the English. So we got to see these this season. We did not get to see our English dealer because he was not able to get here. But uh, the American pieces tend to have these jewels added in at the corners like that one in the middle there where you see the diamond shaped jewels. Uh, they just have a little more design. The English ones are a little more utilitarian and typically flatter. Um, and the crest is really neat in there. Somebody had that made for their mansion, no doubt. 
so many of these came out of buildings and houses that were torn down in the 1970s because those houses were 70 and 80 years old and a lot of them were not well kept so they fell apart uh, now it's hard to find old buildings where they are tearing out architectural elements like this because everybody wants them again so they restore instead of replacing just beautiful work though all right, I like that little table there because of all the little medallions in it. And it's interesting to me to see marble. Uh, marble is starting to come back. It's been hard to sell marble top tables for probably the last five or seven years. But I am seeing an interest again because people are using marble instead of granite in uh, kitchens. And I'm seeing new furniture with that sort of thing. So I do believe that the old stuff will follow suit which means it's a good time to buy marble furniture because a lot of it's not very expensive. I like the shape of that gold stand. Oh, here we go, Coca-Cola machine. I've always wanted to own one of these, I never have. They sell for about four to $600 if you have one that's complete and in working order, and this is from the early 60s. They have such a great shape, and they can serve three things, Coke, Sprite, and I guess probably originally tab then Diet Coke. Here's one of these wooden shelves with all the drawers in it. I just sold a couple of metal ones. People love the old map drawers. People who collect prints and want to keep them organized and don't want to frame everything. Artists use them. I sold one to a gal who had a shell collection. Up here is a big large plate format camera from about 1900. This dealer gets really cool stuff. There's corbels, there's a whole bunch of old doors. I always think of uh, Cindy Smotherman with Firehouse Antiques in Indiana whenever I see corbels because that's something she really likes and always has in stock. In fact, they get a lot of this type of uh, farm furniture. Now, a lot of these pieces are Southern and Southern primitive furniture actually sells for more than Northern because there wasn't as much of it. Uh, there weren't as many people and a lot of people lived, um, frankly, as indentured servants or slaves. And so there weren't a ton of people to have these types of things in their home. Now, this space, cast iron, and I was on a cast iron kick because I had started selling in Kentucky, which I still do, and cast iron is really big up there. So every time I see cast iron, I end up gravitating towards it. These are fun because they're old reclaimed items from uh, welding tanks and the such uh, su similar made into wind chimes. And then these are hand forged. These are new pieces, but they're great for renovation and repurposing of things. And so they do allow some of that in at this show because it goes along with the antiques. They try to be pretty good about not letting in too many new things though. This space, lots of Pyrex and depression glass. I remember this was kind of a cloudy day and that's why it doesn't seem brighter, but this stuff's really vibrant when you look at it in a good light. This space has really good early crockery. This one with the man on it, uh, you don't see human figures on these very often at all. That has to be, oh, I'd say $750 just because of having this great figure in the blue slip. Slip is uh, basically clay, wet moist clay, and they would use that and apply it and then fire it as part of the decoration. And so these are, yeah, see there, that one's marked at 400. That's because these old salt glaze blue slip decorated pieces, especially if they have birds and people and interesting subjects, are very desirable. And this one's neat with the flowers too. You'll see them in jugs, you'll see them in crockery and openware. This person had a really good selection. Now there's a lot of lids missing, that's often the case. <laughs> and then there were these. I just had to show these because they were very clean. They're in wonderful condition. They're very grandma and grandpa from the 70s. But this dealer actually gets a lot of cool modernism. And she is at every Renegar show and I love showing her space because she always has something different. She's really good about mixing it up and keeping it interesting. Uh, down there on the bottom, we see the owl. I believe that's Baccarat. I also see up here, this piece is Swedish. And then I love the Murano rooster with the gold head. That's just so much fun. She just really gets great stuff. Uh, this particular show, she had a lot of Asian items. This is Peking glass, as they call it. 
Peking, of course, is now Beijing, but uh, when I was a kid, it was still called Peking, and those two layer carved cased glass pieces with that deep carving are exemplary of the type. This is a very pretty French Art Nouveau piece. I sort of ignored this lovely cut glass to the left, though. Some of those are Waterford. Some of those are Hawks and other known American makers as well. Uh, cut glass was really popular with collectors, gosh, 30 years ago, so it's a sleeper now. And then I love the Lucite stack table. The lamp is cool as well. I, you know, I have a thing about Lucite because I show it a lot because it just always attracts me. And then look at the colors on those lamps, that turquoise. Turquoise was very big in about 1965. These architectural pieces are neat. The uh, urns have been repainted, but they were actually old ones. And then I love the garden gate with the palm tree. That just looks like it should be anywhere in Florida that you go. Of course, it'd be covered with vines because Florida grows vines really well. Little outboard motor there, a Seagull 7, and then there's a bunch of the newer beer taps. I prefer the older ones. Those big new ones are showy, but they're obviously new. And then I love this guy, this uh, swordfish. What a great sculpture that is. And then a baby grand piano that's really baby. Uh, that's actually nice. A lot of people are not buying pianos because they are not finding them movable or something they can deal with. But this size would definitely work, and it's got the full keyboard. Let's see what we saw in here. Well, the wigs on those heads are pretty groovy, and it turns out there are people collecting vintage wigs. I don't think I mentioned them when I was... Uh, in there before. Oh yes, a cloudy day. You can see people covering up. We just had a rain shower at the last Mount Dora of the season for this year. It does happen there sometimes, but there still were some good things out to see. So let's see what we've got on this table. Here, Granada Gold, the Italian from the 70s, and this Hollywood Regency with the glam gold accessories, wall sconces. Uh, it definitely gives a very ritzy appeal, and, you know, these were done in an older gold, I, I call it old gold, where it's not shiny bright, and people really like that. They want it to have the dullness of age, whether it's really old or just 1960s and 70s. And this dealer is a friend of mine, uh, Rhonda and uh, Rodney, her husband. Uh, Rhonda loves this kind of stuff, and she looks for it everywhere. I run into her uh, estate sales around Tampa, and she's always got a piece in her hand. She just knows how to ferret it out. Um, they brought a lot of neat stuff. I like the trench art in the back, those two vases. And, oh good, I'm going to zero in on them. Uh, yes, they're hammered out out of old uh, artillery shells from the First World War. You see Second World War pieces as well, but these have more of an Art Nouveau feel, so we know that they're older. And also the fluted tops are something that we would have more typically associated with earlier styles. And what else do we have on this table? I love those jointed wooden figures, but they've been reproduced a lot, so I've been avoiding those. But there behind it is a marble lamp that can go with the marble tables that I said are coming back in style. Sometimes when I see these flashbacks, I want to go back and buy things that I didn't think of at the time. This chest is really great. It's Swedish. It's dated 1852. It's got all the original hardware. It would have been uh, essentially a dowry chest or something to send with somebody who is uh, sailing across to the United States. I hear a lot that trunks and chests came across the Oregon Trail or came by boat, but in the case of the Swedish ones, it's actually usually true. I just think it's so cool that this 1950s tractor pedal car has this very streamlined shape, you know, like it's going to win a race. <laughs> and then this dealer had a lot of furniture, and you know, at this show, the furniture didn't sell this well. He brought this same furniture back to the last show we did in Mount Dora, and he sold almost every single piece. Furniture has really turned around. Younger people are starting to discover antiques because there haven't been theaters or music venues or other things to distract them and take all of their free time and free money. And younger people are people who buy larger pieces of furniture because they're starting out with houses. And I think they're starting to realize that these things have style, they're good quality. And like my 32-year-old niece says, 
she's tired of everything looking like a white box from Ikea. No offense, Ikea. I, I have an Ikea sofa that I like very much, but, you know, people want some style these days. This is cool. Uh, the National Beer Crate for $90. Anything with that fellow on it. I can't remember what his name was. He had a name, but he was their character logo. And that is what makes those popular. A lot of people from Maryland recognize this uh, because it was brewed in Baltimore. Uh, the wooden wagon it's in is really cool, too. I sold the last one I had for 150 Ah, uh, yes, here we go. I guess I decided to take a break and go uh, looking for food at this place. There is a big food court, which is nice because it's a gigantic show. You know, there's over a thousand dealers at the November, January, and February shows in Mount Dora. And it's close to other services and restaurants, but are you going to really leave and come back once you're in the middle of it? So they have all sorts of things. They've got everything from Blazin' Barbecue to... Uh, uh, ice cream and fish and chips and all sorts of stuff. So you can probably find something that will make everybody happy if you look. These are beautiful in my opinion. I just love the deep orange color. Poppies were very popular in the early 1900s because a lot of people were discovering California and the California poppy was a popular flower to have sent and made part as bouquets. And that's interesting to see this by Royal Bay Ruth because they were a Bavarian company, but they made really neat stuff in this orange red glaze was one of their hallmarks. They used it on their devil line as well. And that's a wonderful fun line of uh, tableware that has little demons on the as handles and such. Little windmills that go in yards are very popular now. This one's going to date to about 1970, but it was kept well in a place where it didn't get a lot of weathering. Uh, people just love these. All right, dresser boxes. I'm a fan, and I also see those really cool glasses. And here we go. This is the pavilion. Uh, now, the pavilions are a great thing to have at Mount Dora because on a rainy day or if the weather seems to be turning, you can go in and shop with dealers who are undercover. There's also a big indoor antique mall that's there year-round. I like this because it's got the old uh, TWA and the old uh, United Airlines mainliner on it, and so a lot of those are defunct logos or they've changed the uh, graphics or the service is no longer in business so that dates that to the 60s somebody had a lot of fun taking one of these plain old carts from the 1960s and repainting it and you know a lot of times these were left in places where they got surface rust so repainting is not necessarily a bad thing to do here's some cute pieces uh, the Shawnee pottery there's Aunt Jemima on the left this was before Aunt Jemima was removed from the marketplace so that piece is probably more valuable than it was when the dealer had it priced for this show. Um, you know, black memorabilia is a controversial thing. I have to say, honestly, my customers are mostly black. That's why I carry it. I also see some really cool pieces of McCoy in this area. The double tulip is nice, but I like some of those modern, like the chartreuse green on the back there. And let's see what else we have in here. The pavilion was pretty full that day, actually. So there should be some other goodies that we can spot as we walk by here. Let's see what caught our eye. Hmm, nothing in that booth, I guess. <laughs> uh, now, vintage clothing is something that people wish I would show more. I don't run into a lot of vintage clothing at antique shows because it's kind of hard to move around, um, but it is definitely desirable. There's a bunch of really nice silver uh, dresser pieces, and those are all real sterling silver from the mid-20th century. It was quite common for brides in that time to get sterling as wedding presents, and a lot of them didn't like to polish, so a lot of that stuff just went in drawers and hasn't seen the light of day in years. A lot of it's coming back out of drawers now because the price of silver has gone up, so people are interested again. And I think these are really fun. I believe these are Saito, and this was one of the preeminent modernist woodblock artists in Japan in the 1960s and 70s. And Saito pieces are selling for over $100 now. Uh, the table here is one of the brass tables with the folding legs. They've made a big comeback as well. And then behind we see chandeliers. There is a giant section of chandeliers in one of the pavilions at Mount Dora. 
And so I like to show these because the styles rotate and you get to see some variety that way. The metal piece on the right there is an old one. And then we have what I look like when I first woke up in the morning. So that's a lovely picture there, isn't it? <laughs> these orange ceramic pieces, I believe, are Raymore from Italy. There were several good designers who worked for Raymore, and some of their pieces can be rather valuable. So look for the Raymore name. And then this is a Jure piece. And Jure has certainly gone up in the market in the last uh, period since this was filmed. I would say that piece was probably four or five hundred then and maybe nine hundred now. If only we could go back in our time machine. Here's a bunch of Haywood Wakefield. I have to say, even though people say that Haywood Wakefield was more collectible 20 and 30 years ago than it is now, I sell this stuff really well. Uh, it, just it's really been a mainstay for me in St. Petersburg. I've had a couple of collections come my way and I've sold virtually every piece. I have one set left at uh, Vintage Modern St. Pete right now. This space is very fancy and fancy can be good um, but fancy sometimes mixes newer and older pieces and this space definitely had both. Uh, some of these have been reupholstered so they look newer. Obviously the hall tree is an older piece, but then when I look in the front here, um, some of the furniture sitting at the front of the booth really wasn't. Um, oh, and here I am saying in the ticker that marble top furniture seems to be making a comeback, and I believe that's still true. Uh, the bust in the middle is nice. I believe that was actually vintage. Uh, some of the other statuary there are a little more questionable as to age. So if you're stepping up for big fancy pieces like this, do your homework. Take a look at the bottom. See if there seems to be actual wear. See if the patina seems right for the age. And that will help you not make mistakes that are expensive. I Part of the reason I do these videos and try to educate as much as I can is because I want people to enjoy collecting and not feel like they got burned and get turned off to it. This dealer, however, has all original stuff and some of this stuff is really, really good. Um, the planter's peanuts with the label, you never see it with the label. Uh, I, I have to say, his stuff is expensive, but his stuff should be expensive because it's all tip-top shape. All of these, I would say, rate between an 8 and a 10. 10 is absolutely perfect. Most collectors of this sort of stuff, when they get the budget to collect it, want as close to perfect as possible because that is hard to find. You know, these things were made to be used. A lot of them were used in institutional locations. They got wiped down. They got bumped. They got chipped. A lot of hands were on them. So to find them clean in original condition is not so easy. Um, that is a gambling device, that gumball machine, because gambling wasn't legal, but you could get around it by making it entertainment, quote unquote, or you won cigarettes or gum or something else rather than a cash prize. Great old clock advertising the whiskey there. That's an extremely hard one to find. And uh, I saw a murine advertising uh, piece behind a mirror. That's a very rare piece as well. The Wrigley's chewing gum on the right there is good. We do see these chiclet boxes time to time, but not with the original scoop and not with the original chiclets. So that was kind of fun too. I don't recommend chewing them now. Nice brass cash register. We do run into those still because they're very heavy and so not everybody wants to keep one because it's hard to move around. And there's another Zeno. Uh, lots of Zeno. Zeno apparently was a gum. And here's ball gum. And again, this looks a lot like a slot machine, deliberately so. This is because slot machines started becoming used in Reno in 1931. So we're using those cases for other devices as well in that time. Now this was really fun. This is French. It's based on a famous sculpture. This is a water font that was in somebody's patio. And I think she's just... You know, she's got appropriate wear, but really beautifully done and just so sweet and the wear is right. So, wow, what a fun show and how fun it's been for me to get to come back with you and show you all this stuff. And while this guy talks on his outro, I'm going to do the same. 
I am just really pleased to have so many people involved with the channel now and I just want to thank you all so much and we will see you again with our regular videos coming soon after I answer this call. <laughs> Take care now. Bye-bye.